right, this is a media test kind of experiment, but it can also be a stamp along. So if you'd like to stamp along with me, uh, grab your supplies and get ready to go. We have two different types of pads right here, or two different colors of pads, just a Brilliance Moonlight White and a Brilliance Graphite Black, okay? You don't need the Brilliance Fast Drying Styles of Pigment Inks except for the, the foil style of card. We're going to be using two different types of um, Star Dream. This is a 105 pound Star Dream Silver. This one's a 81 pound, I believe, text weight Star Dream Lapis Lazuli. And this is a silver foil. Um, I don't know if it's cardstock. They they call it foil sheets uh, in the description, I believe, and um, it's roughly I would say it's about it's a little bit thinner than the hundred and five pound um, cover weight here, but it's I don't know it's probably like a ninety pound uh, weight if I were to guess at it, and you can tell how um, mirrored this is. It just just touching it if you have any kind of residue on your hands whatsoever, oils or whatnot, it really leaves um, a lot of fingerprints, but that's that's fine. But this is the paper that you'll need the brilliance for, unless you're doing something like a stazon or um, embossing, okay? But I'm just going to do it with the brilliance here. All right, now I'm going to show you just how fast these can come together. We're going to be using nature set number nine here. Just for kind of, uh, I don't know, just keeping things simple, we'll do the same composition on all three so you can do a little bit of comparison contrast um, uh, viewing. And uh, I don't know, you can decide which ones you like or whatnot, but we're going to use the same technique right here, okay? So I have a 100% cotton, cotton ball here. I just find that those work the best. I really have a tough time using the acrylic ones. I find the experience to be completely different. Um, in terms of usage goes, or in terms of, you know, the, uh, the transference of media. Um, okay, so, in nature set number nine here, I hope I might need to reinvigorate that cling foam there, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a moon in the sky, and the lakeside cove, small, is going to be down here. I might use the lakeside cove, and I might use the... Uh, um, the Pines and Rocks is kind of like a foreground type of thing. I know there's all kinds of different things we can do here, but I'll show you how fast this can come around. Okay, now, um, with the Star Dream papers, I can stamp the composition first, all right, just in black ink, because this these papers are porous and they all dry. You know, the inks will dry on there, but the, the, the foil... Um, I stamp my imagery on there it's going to take a really long time for it to dry so I can't stamp them down and then apply white ink over the top of it because I'm just going to be smearing everything that's been laid down so I'm going to use just use the same process on all three of these surfaces okay all right so when it comes to this moon right here what I want to do is I want to create that background glow okay and this is a lake that we're going to be stamping out on here so we'll put the lake somewhere around here and then what I want to do is I want to create this um, kind of um, column of reflected light down here in the water. So we're going to go with the moon up here in terms of lightness. And then what I'll do is I'll just make this column of light right down the center right here. So it's going to go, it looks going to look like a gigantic eye, lowercase i, with a dot up here of uh, white. And then we'll just have this column of white down here. You can connect the two if you want to. It really doesn't matter. But we'll see how it goes here, here. Okay, so we'll go with this moon right here. And see what I'm doing is I'm kind of just dabbing this like this. And then what I'll do is I'll spread it out a little bit so that it looks like the, uh, the light is kind of emanating from that source right there, you know, in the end result. Okay, so it just looks like that. Don't say that I make this look easy. <laughs> it's easy to make easy techniques look easy. Okay. Now this one's not going to have as much contrast here. Okay. So you can see what this looks like. We might bring a little bit of black into this one on the surrounding area, or maybe on both the star dreams. I don't think on the on the uh, the foil though. The foil already has. It's it's so multi-tone because 
you go like that and it's completely light, right? But then you go like that and it's completely dark. It's like darker, or I don't know, as dark as the dark, you know, lapis lazuli like that, just depending on what's reflected in the, uh, the surface like that. Okay, so column of light like this, okay? Now, if you have like a really super juicy, wet, you know, uh, pigment ink pad, then, you know, there, you might be getting kind of these blobby types of um, looks right here. You, know, you can kind of just spread it around like that, right? Okay. If you kind of spread it around on the, the foil, what you might end up doing is you kind of end up... Um, removing some of the ink just because it is so non-porous and it'll just wipe right off but we'll see how this goes okay now here's this column of light if you want to you can kind of make it come out in perspective a little bit where it's a little bit wider here at the base you know and it kind of narrows down going back in perspective it's all up to you okay All right, so I just kind of see that there was a big blob there, but just kind of keep spreading it around a little bit, okay? Don't try to get the whole thing. Don't go like this, like, you know, I wouldn't. But you just kind of work a little area like that, okay? Like about like so. See, it's a little bit wider on the base right there. It doesn't look like it's kind of going back in the distance. See, it already looks like, doesn't it already look like kind of like a, a light source or a moon with that reflected light down here. Lapis lazuli is really fun to work work with, or just any kind of dark paper. Okay, now this one's going to um, spread around much faster because this paper isn't absorbing any of the moisture whatsoever, so it's just sitting all on the surface. Okay, this one's absorbing a little bit, you know, as I add it down there. In fact, as this kind of sets up and dries, it gets a little bit darker. Um, I have a feeling because it just keeps absorbing into the surface of the paper. Okay, so it, it tends to get a little bit more um, translucent as it dries. Okay, see how that goes right there? It's not perfect. Mine, mine's all blobby if you look at it, you know. Some people might get kind of frustrated when they're looking at it, you know, because they're comparing theirs um, in the process with my end result. But I think you'll see with your end results, everything just kind of comes together anyways. Okay, now this one right here, let's take a look. I think we're going to have to really use some more black ink on the surrounding to really um, um, highlight this uh, light source right here, or reflected light, I should say. I'm wondering, too, on this metallic, if my impressions will even stamp out, okay? This metallic here tends to be a, I don't know, it, it seemed like it was a little bit resistant. Um, maybe not the silver one, but the gold one, but I would imagine the silver would be the same. I can't remember what ink I've tried on it before. It might have been the Versafine, or maybe the, uh, the Brilliance might stamp out a little bit easier. Uh, one of my uh, startering papers kind of resisted the ink a little bit. All right, now this one, like I said, it's it's barely visible right there, okay? So we have three different um, applications right here, all looking quite different, you know, in terms of the, uh, you know, this point in the process right here and the amount of contrast um, established quite a bit, and maybe even more, and very little here, okay? All right, so that's all you need to do. What do we got here? Preliminary things right here. We're at the nine minute mark, so it's like three minutes a card or something like that. It might even go even faster had I just been working with, you know, one piece right here. You know, it might even take, I don't know, that doesn't it doesn't have to take that long. It, you know, we can take a, probably a minute on it or something like that. Okay, let's stamp out our moon. I mean, we could start off with the, uh, the Lakeside Cove first or whatever. Usually when I uh, taught classes, I had people st stamp the main image first. You know, just an establishing kind of um, structure, um, image, and then we stamp the, you know, the light source after that. Well, let's just go with the moon right here because we've kind of established that little glow going in there. All right, so Brilliance Black here. I just re-inked this. I'm trying to 
uh, find out if um, if I have to re-ink this pad every time I use it. I don't know. Okay, so let's start off with the lapis lazuli here. And, okay, so see there's my moon. I'm putting my finger right where I think it's going to go. If you're using a positioner, use those ones accordingly. Okay. This is cloud with moon, by the way. All the images in this set are also sold individually, too. So you can use any moon, too. Yeah, but we, have, we have a lot of different moons in the, uh, uh, the uh, Stamscapes line. But see how that moon kind of glows? And where that we've kind of gone out there, it looks like it's reflecting off some of that uh, clouds, right? All right. So that's really fun stuff. I love kind of doing these background types of things. I do that on a, a white paper too sometimes, you know, when we're adding dye based things, whatever, northern lights, whatever types of looks, braring, and then just stamping the imagery right over it and seeing how that goes. Okay. I'm really liking the, uh, the black impressions on metallics uh, or mirror, uh, foils. For a while though, I was just kind of doing the uh, metallics on metallics, silver, on silver uh, foil, white, and that has a really elegant look, but there's something pretty dramatic about um, these black impressions on there. Look at that. See so that, I mean, it doesn't matter how wide you went with your, um, with your, your moon, or your, your lighting behind, you know, your moon light. The wider you go, the more that you have it reflecting off of the, uh, clouds, okay. All right, now let's try this on the, um, the Star Dream Silver. Let's see if this stamps out. In theory, you think it would because it's more porous than, um, you know, the mirrored stock. But let's take a look and see. Okay. Oh, that stamped out beautifully. Okay, so I... I think it it must have been the uh, the versifying. I don't know if the versifying stamped very well. This is this is I don't know what this is. I think this is a versifying on gold foil. See, so look how dim you know how little uh, the ink transferred to this one. I I can't remember which one that was now. All right, so I don't need to worry about that. That stamped out beautifully. Okay, so that is that. Okay. Now let's go with our main kind of focal point, this, you know, if you're stamping out um, a lakeside cove or something, you know, chances are that's going to be kind of the main subject matter of the scene. I don't know, you can say that the moon is uh, the main subject, I don't know, in terms of kind of the, the visual anchor of the scene. You might go, you know, take a look and you know, your eye goes straight to the uh, moon. But as far as a kind of a landscape foundational type of element, this will be it right here. Okay. All right. So let's go with this. I'm going to go roughly in here, and some of the trees are going to go up into the sky, okay? I mean, you can stamp it lower, too. I, I, you know, I probably don't want this column to be above, you know, my lake. I want this to be the reflection. So I'm just aiming for roughly that horizon somewhere in between my column and the sky. Okay. All right. Oh, I don't know. I just did it on the, uh, the foil because it was the closest thing to me right there. Let's go for another impression. That's just one impression of the uh, Lakeside Cove. And I'll go with another one over here. And I'll overlap my first one a little bit. Okay. Like that. And here's what I'm telling people. Some people will say, hey, if I did that, I'd make a complete mess of it. Well, uh, I get you, and I completely see what you're talking about. But what they're talking about is they would um, touch this. Well, you know what I mean? It's just really as simple as be just conscious of that. Don't touch this when you're working on foil, on you know, the wet inks, you know what I mean? But that being said, I touch mine sometimes on accident. Okay, so there is our foundation right there. Okay, now we're going to stamp in some other imagery in here too, kind of balance everything out a little bit. 
Uh, let's go with the lapis lazuli here. Okay. Now, every time, now I went for three impressions on that one, right? Re ink in between your impressions so that you get a nice solid um, impression imagery. Okay. All right. Now, if you get some of those trees going in front of your moon, that's fine. Just the trees are in front of the moon. All right. Second impression right here. I didn't ink up the whole thing. I just inked up, I don't know, two thirds of it or so. Overlap a good, I don't know, eighth of an inch, quarter inch or so. It doesn't have to be perfectly overlapped. In fact, don't look at it as a, uh, don't look at the, um, the different components as like puzzle pieces. You want to overlap your imagery. That's why we don't require, you know, like real super careful masking and positioning because you want to overlap everything. Okay. All right. So see how that goes. No, you know, no gaps in between those images right there because I've overlapped it. All right. Now we have this one right here. This one really shows, you know, where, where the, uh, the cloud ends. So I think we'll, we'll just blend that in a little bit. I wonder if I can do some streaks of black in the foil. I don't know if I can or not. All right, so... Silver Star Dream looks pretty good with the brilliance at least. Okay. It has an interesting look to it, I would say, too. Alright. Now one of the things about landscape imagery too, let's say I wanted to have some foreground trees. Let's say if I didn't have, you know, the uh the taller, larger pines and rocks right here. I could, you know, take this and stamp it over here, and this one a little bit higher, and this one lower, and these can be my foreground images, as well as my background trees, okay? But the set does come with the larger trees, so let's go ahead and utilize those. Now, the thing that's going through in my mind is I'm thinking, I wonder if I want to blend in this a little bit more and bring some of these streaks before I stamp this out, okay? I think let's just keep things nice and simple. Let's just go and uh, use this first. We'll work our composition here. Okay, so let's see. Oops. Okay, naturally, this this is the set with the clang. These also come unmounted. Okay. So let's go, let's build this a little bit different. Let's use an impression over here. I mean, you can put it wherever you want. I'm putting it kind of not midway up, but we'll have kind of a, a whole kind of a structuring in here. You can put it wherever you want, though. Maybe I'll do it in different ways in the three different surfaces here, okay? So I'll go like this here. Okay, see how it's kind of foreground, mid-ground as well. When you stamp it a little bit higher up, it represents trees farther back, okay? That's a, in Western perspective. Things that are higher up usually represent things farther off in the distance. Okay, let's go about right here. How's that? Feel free to you know, spin your pieces around. You don't always have to have them perfectly upright like that, okay? All right, so you have those images like that. You don't really see my column of uh, light very well, so this is one where I, I'll have to bring in some additional um, shadow, okay? All right, let's set up some, uh, create some additional structuring with this one. Let's just go with this in the, the foreground on this one. I'll use this one in a little bit of a different way each, on each scene, okay? I'll put this one right into that uh, lighting, okay? On this one. This one I'll just, I'll just have them, kind of the trees coming up from the bottom, like we're kind of on the opposite shoreline here. That one didn't stamp out really too dark there, so I just gave it another impression right over the top of it. Right in here, okay? Lapis lazuli is pretty fun, isn't it? Um, 
Let's go with the silver foil. Actually, I mean, they're all really fun to uh, surfaces to explore. They really have a different dynamic um, feel to all of them. Okay. All right now, on the foil, one thing I didn't really mention is <laughs> because you're working with such a thick ink, and they're kind of oil-based too, so they're really slick, is when you set your uh, stamp down like that, you really have to kind of um, be careful that you don't slide and skew a little bit, you know, with the, uh, the stamp um, sliding even like two millimeters or something like that. Otherwise, you're going to get kind of a smeared looking image, okay? And see, sometimes like this one right here, can see how my card is kind of bowed, so sometimes when I'm pressing down on this like this, in between here, and when it goes flat, sometimes it goes like this, and see, like that a little bit. So you just be wary of that. So what I do is I just push this down a little bit like that, and then I stamp it out, okay? Uh, the silver cards do bow, you know, when not in use or whatever, like I cut them down and I, you know, I have them sitting on my desk. They do uh, tend to uh, bow a little bit like that, but just kind of counter bow it. It's like that with any kind of thicker um, inks and uh, papers like that too. That's why I, I, I didn't think I'd like working on the text weight very much, but the, the text weight one never bows, so I don't know. I'm kind of rethinking my whole idea of the thicker the better when it comes to uh, papers. Um, I don't know. I'm going to think about that one. All right, so let's see here. Um, I don't know how to, how to use all my different images from uh, the set, but let's go ahead and use kind of a focal point image in the form of this little solo canoeist right here. Okay. Put the solo canoeist right in the uh, right in the light, or maybe going into the light. I don't know. I might do it in a different spot in each card. Okay. Now this one, it's so small. I really have to, and because it is such a focal point image, it is really hard to photograph these, even in video form. But you, you see that. Let me see if I get an angle here for you. <laughs> I can see it real good. Okay, here. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to, you know, because those things are mirrors, basically. That cardstock. Um, it is really hard to get a photo of it. That's what everyone keeps mentioning on uh, Facebook when they're posting their uh, scenes. Okay, look at that. The dark cardstocks really have a different kind of spirit to them, don't they? All right, and here, now this one I have a tree right here, so I just have to kind of put this little character, I'll put it farther back in the distance, or higher up on the scene, how's that? Okay. <clears throat> All right, now, I don't know, I could do some birds in the background like this. I don't think I'm going to, though. I think we'll just leave it like as is. Like that. Um, all right, now let's check out if this process is going to work for me. I don't know about the foil, but since this is kind of an experiment here, I see all my pieces that I'm doing is kind of being in the lab, so to speak, or whatnot, and experimenting, <laughs> even though it is, a, I guess, an instructional style of video for some. I think you should see how I work and uh, my philosophy on trying things. That's what I always recommend for everyone to do. Don't be too kind of gun-shy about trying things. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, I don't have to, you know, it's not like, some kind of a uh, you know million dollar uh, scene right here or something like that. I care about my scenes, yeah, but uh, you know, 
it's all about kind of the learning process, you know, and uh, the process of experimentation and whatnot. And, uh, you know, this isn't my last piece of uh, paper on Earth, so I can always use more. Okay, so that looks pretty good. This is just some, just a cotton ball again. And I'm instead of just adding the black, I mean the white, now I'm adding the black. And so see how that's kind of um, creating um, some additional shadows. And when you create additional shadows like that, what are we doing um, with the areas that are kind of lighter or retained that are the color of the, the surface? What we're doing is we're creating lighting. By creating light, you're defining shadows. So it's the opposite, right? Okay, now I'm not going to go all the way in there because I want to, you know, my moon to be light, okay? I'll show you how easy this can be, okay, right, like this. I'm just adding this in. This kind of spreads around a little bit too, so you can use a little bit of this type of motion too if you want to. You can wipe like this, okay? But look at this. I'm not trying to tone out my whole scene. I'm just kind of working in one little area like this. And this is the part that makes blending really easy. A lot of times when people are thinking, oops, I'm smearing my uh, trees there, okay? So don't rub like that over the tops of imagery, okay? So that's one thing I learned from that. So just dab over your imagery. It's not completely dry yet, I guess, or set up, okay? But see, what I was getting at was I'm working a small area, okay? Just that little corner up top there, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in like this. See, I'm just working this one little area, and by doing it like this, I get a nice smooth kind of blending and gradation of tone, all right? I'm not doing this all around like this, which is going to, you know, look like this, okay, when you do isolated things. So your movement is kind of more like this, okay? You add it, and you blend it in like this. So you get that transition like that, okay? So adding, and then moving a little bit, okay? And just using a nice light touch. Don't try to get everything in one fell swoop, okay? Okay, where do you add the shadows? Well, you can kind of keep it really easy, and you can just kind of create a vignette, kind of a darker perimeter, and you don't really have to think about things in general. But here's this rock down here, and see I'm just going to put a little bit of sh uh, shading or shadow at the base of the rock, like so. And it looks like that rock is kind of casting a shadow now, right? Okay, here's some rocks right here. So I'm just kind of building up a little bit of shadow right around that. Okay. Now I, I do think that this would have been better had I added these little streaks in here before I added the imagery, you know, just so that um, it's a little bit easier and less precarious in terms of if I, if I want to do a streak across here, because I think these little streaks would look really good in here over the water surface, but I can't do that over the top of that wet uh, canoeist right there. So so that's why I'm just kind of going with this little tapping style of a uh, perimeter application of uh, media right here. Okay. So this now too, you're using it kind of in a drier touch. You're adding this type of barely visible mark on your paper. Okay. So that becomes a very, very easy, non-precarious, is that a word? Um, addition of tone because it's you're adding just so little at any given time it becomes much more kind of hazardous you might say visually hazardous if you're um, I just put a big streak right there so I'm just going to blend that out um, the wetter you you have um, your applicator okay you're adding so much more tone at one time so you know add accordingly I would say a lot of people just aren't used to that. They're not used to using such a, a minimal application of any given color sometimes or medium. So they're not used to adding like a very dry version of a given color. But that's the thing that's going to give you so much more control and uh, just ease of application, okay? Because it comes about um, nice and slowly. Okay, 
We'll build up that little tone up here a little bit more. Okay. All right, so that looks like that. See that kind of glow, that overall kind of uh, perimeter um, vignette? It kind of contains the imagery. Doesn't it look like the the light is coming coming from within the card that way? Okay. All right, let's try it on this one right here. Okay. There's so much more uh, less contrast between the black and the dark blue than the black and the silver, okay? So, you can add a little bit more freely, but I would still kind of recommend, you know, staying with your um, good technique in terms of, you know, the utilization of kind of a dry applicator like that, okay? So just use it a little bit more, okay? Before you move on, okay? Where do we add it? We're adding it, creating some shadows at the base of those rocks like that. Okay, I'm kind of wiping right here because there's no um, trees or anything like that, so I can you, you know feel free to kind of wipe like that without smearing imagery. Now the star dreams are porous, like I said, so you know these images right here. Actually, they are pretty wet. Look <laughs> at my finger like that. Okay, I thought it was uh, uh, absorbing a little bit faster. This will dry pretty fast. You know, we're talking, I don't know, just let it set overnight or something like that. And you'll be fine. Uh, the metallic, you know, the foils, you know, you're going to give that, if you're just letting it just strictly air dry, you're going to give it a week or two. <laughs> I know that's really weird, but I don't know, just see it as an art piece or something like that. You know, think of it as like a, you know, if someone's doing an oil painting or something like that, they're not, you know, kind of waiting for it to dry like instantly. I know it's uh, much longer than most crafting styles of uh, projects, but uh, I don't know, just do a few of them and have a great time. Set them aside. I've just put them on a bookshelf or something like that, just out of the way. If you're not going to be cooking in your oven or something like that, that's a nice dry place, and it has all these racks in there. You know, someone said, "Oh, okay." I gave someone that suggestion. They said, "Oh, what they would do is they would, they're going to, they imagine they're, they're going to put them in there and forget. And they're going to turn on their oven. Well, put a post-it note on the outside of your oven and just say, "Don't turn on" or something like that. You know, you know, beware art. Okay. Uh, and, you know, take it out. But isn't that the perfect drying rack, though? The oven? You got all these, like, two or three racks in there, and it's a nice dry environment and whatnot. Uh, you know, provided you're not, you know, using your oven or whatnot. Nice and dry. Drying racks. Set, you know? You go back in there after, a, you know, a week or whatever, and yet uh, all of your scenes will be done. All right, look at that lapis lazuli or whatnot. Isn't that really fun like that? That dark paper. And there's our eye, you know, our little, our big little eye like that. In terms of lighting, it really established these things really quickly. I, I really like the additional um, black in here too, I think. What do you think? All right, now on this one right here, I don't know. Let's give it a try. I, I don't think I've done this before on the, the, the foil. I don't have super high hopes because I'm not going to be able to go over the imagery. That imagery right there is completely wet. If I wanted to, I can take a paper towel and wipe this whole thing off, and it'll pretty much be just ready to go. Okay, so let's give it a try here, okay? I'll just kind of, I'll be really, well, I'll try to be careful around my... Uh, my imagery, okay? Um, this, again, it would have been better had I added on all of my tones before I stamped the imagery, okay? But we'll do that in the next process right here. I just wanted to keep things consistent between the three of these uh, in terms of a process just to make things nice and easy, okay? But, I think that, that being said, I think this looks I think this looks excellent on the, uh, on this, you know, the cotton ball, whatever ink application on here, it's going on there really smooth. Like that, can you, I don't know if I can even show you, but see that right there? Okay, let me 
me see if I can get it focused. It's going on there really smoothly like that. Okay, here we go. Something like that. It's kind of camping off the top, isn't it? Let's, let me try to add a little bit of shadow down here. What I might be doing is I might be kind of blurring some of the, uh, the imagery down there and using some of that ink that's still wet to kind of blend it out. But it's not too bad. I don't know. It's not, it's not just, I'm not just tapping it down and removing all that ink instantly, which I thought could happen, but, uh, but that's not too bad, actually. And I'm able to get some kind of nice grayscale in there, too, not just... All right, I'm going to have to do this on my next scene, I think, or next lesson, test this out. I thought I would be blurring out the images a lot more than apparently what's happening, especially after the Star Dream one. Actually, that looks pretty good. Okay, so see that? I don't know. Yeah, gosh, it's really hard to see it. I'll show you so you can do a little comparison contrast. See over here and then over here. There's just, <laughs> this is so much more body to this side right here. I did the top up there, but we'll come right around here too. All right. Just kind of adding it at the base of the rocks here. I'll put some of it into the rocks now. I'm not so gun shy about using this right in here anymore. It holds up pretty well. I am kind of using a more delicate tap too than maybe on the, uh, you know, the, the star dream. Now where, where I'm putting my finger right here to hold it down, I did remove like all the ink that I just applied with the cotton ball, but no big deal. All you just do is just go back over and do it over again, or reapply it. All right, so I'm just adding it right back in over the top of that right there. Okay. I always like when I, I don't know, test something out and it works, or I get kind of the gist of how it could potentially work if I were to do it again. Not everything I do works out, you know, like this, invisible. But you can always use, oh, uh, this was another experiment here. I should try, I don't know, that's my experimental piece. Okay, so, there we get that. Pretty dramatic, I think, you know, in terms of a visual like that. I think the, the white here is a little bit heavy, but, um, I don't know, so be it. Um, some water pattern would look, look good in here, okay? And that's in like a different set, or I do it individually, but I, in just in the spirit of keeping just only with this set, let's just use the images from uh, number nine. Okay, so see that? See how reflective that is right there? You know, this is kind of this, you know, pearlescent type of surface right here, like that, and that's what you get right here. So it's a little bit more dynamic, I would say, than using white, a uh, white piece of paper, okay, just in terms of the sheer reflected nature. So here's a, kind of an example of the, you know, a white piece of paper right here, matte paper, and you can see the amount of reflection coming off of that one. This one right here is the most dramatic in terms of the contrast between light and dark, I don't know, this one's pretty dramatic, too, in terms of the contrast. Look how, because I'm reflecting kind of a dark ceiling in my room here, so, I don't know. That, here, let me see. See, <laughs> let me try to put this white paper up here and reflect that, okay? So that white, I mean, it really shows up because there's black, but see, when I'm looking at it from my angle right here, that's not shown in the reflection right here. The contrast between this white column and this area right here isn't so extreme. So, you know, if I had this piece of paper, you can see there's just, you know, hardly any uh, contrast at all. Because this white, you know, I'm reflecting the white. So, I don't know. Okay. So, the ever-changing surface in terms of a mirrored surface, okay. 
and the silver is the most heavily mirrored. All right, just a white paint pen here. Let's try to add in a little bit of a additional um, effects in terms of light on darker papers. I say darker because this one's not so dark, but um, let's see if we can get a little bit of highlighting with this one. I don't think this one's really show up too much, but let's kind of add these little dots in here. I kind of add them in a horizontal kind of format like this. Okay. To go along with the idea of water. Okay. The, uh, the star rings would be kind of nice with some additional white um, pigment ink, kind of in the form of some fog. And you can do that on here, but um, you'd have to really wait for the, uh, the inks to set up and dry. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm doing here, uh, if this shows up at all. Can you see some little dots right there? Okay, it shows up in the camera. All right, now here's the thing about lighting. Here's a little tip for me to you. If the lighting is coming from here, one of the things that people kind of uh, have a, you know, sometimes getting used to is this idea of reflected light, okay? It's easy to kind of create those light sources, but here's something that you can do that's a simple um, process of adding light, okay? The top surfaces of these rocks right here, think of them as three-dimensional as opposed to a two-dimensional surface, which of course we're working on, but when you're thinking three-dimensionally, then you can put a few little highlights, okay, on the top sides of things, okay? Now, I find that it looks better to not do it over everything, okay? Like, you don't have to put it on every single rock, okay? Sometimes it's better to kind of emphasize, you know, a few things, okay? So, see that right there? So, see how that really kind of brought out those rocks a little bit more in a three-dimensional set. I didn't put too much over here, none at all really, so they're all kind of collected in here. Okay, now see this cloud like this, you've heard the silver lining, right? Okay, so this cloud above my moon, it's going to be bottom lit, right? Because the, sun, you know, the, the moonlight is going to be coming from below, so I'll put a few little dots or lines on the bottom side of that cloud, but these clouds underneath the moon will be top lit. So you can put these just like, you know, I did on the rocks. You can put a few little highlights like that. Side lit cloud, you know, if you want to. You don't have to, like I said, you don't have to do it on everything. Sometimes it's a little bit more effective, I think, to not use it uh, on everything. So you can see bottom lit clouds when this, uh, the light is coming from below, top lit clouds when the moon is above it. All right, now let's do the same thing. Let's try the same idea right here, okay? Bottom lit. I, I'm doing this sideways here because I can access the scene more, and plus if I'm working like this, I am put my hands right in front of you, okay, so you can see this, okay? And I would suggest the same thing for you guys, you know, just turn the card in a way that where you you can see what you're doing too, okay? Top lit rocks, okay? Look how it brings those rocks to life like that. Top lit clouds, okay? This is a Meowzen 0.7 millimeter paint pen, okay? I think, th I think there's like... 10 different brands that all look exactly the same. This one just happens to be the one that I tried and it worked just fine. Uh, they were sold out. Artistro seems to have the same ones. I don't know, I might have put too many dots in there like that, but uh, this is how it looks. See like that? Okay, there you can see kind of an example of how light it is. But then when I go like that, it really stands out, right? It's a real interactive surface like this. This is what I'm looking at when I'm adding those reflections, but then when I go like that, I think, oh my god, maybe I added too many. Play around with it and have some fun. Okay, now I'm putting these highlights in the light area, okay, then I might kind of um, I might kind of uh, I don't know, 
whatever, dissipate or whatever as it moves out into the darkness. So I go, you know, less kind of dots out there. Okay. Like that. All right. So see those little shimmery highlights like that. Like I said, it would look really good with the, the, with the water pattern uh, stamp right in here to create some extra shimmer. Maybe in silver ink or something like that would be fun. All right. Let's go with this one. It's, it's really quite dark, so maybe I have less highlights. Maybe they're more subtle. Okay. Yeah. I can do these in blue, too. I have these blue artistro pens, but let's keep this really simple and just stick with the uh, white for now. Okay. I see these highlights are kind of a little bit lighter than... Um, the moon itself, so they kind of stand out, you know, but they can be little magical little sparkles or something like that too, you know, as opposed to reflected light. All right, I'll just keep it like that. I think that's pretty good in terms of uh, drama. Look at that, doesn't that kind of create a little slight bit of shimmer? On the water surface like that yeah a little bit up there a little bit of a you know highlighting around those rocks look at this this is what i like about this star dream um the kind of iridescent styles of paper look at that lighting that's captured on there look at that reflective quality but then you go like this and it's like it's getting darker and darker and darker like that you know what i mean so it's a real interactive surface really really all of them are and it types that have that kind of reflective quality where, you know, light is really going to be coming off of it. All right, this one's, I learned something new on this one, you know, in terms of that addition of tone. I'm going to have to play around with that and do more of it, but do it before the, um, the image impressions over the top of that so I don't have to worry about smearing them, but uh, just kind of knowing where, um, you know, things are going to go roughly like I said, you know, I didn't have to, you know what I mean? That moon, you didn't have to do like this tiny little dime-sized dot of white in there because it has that little kind of glowing perimeter now by having that um, light white um, larger than the, uh, the light source itself. Get that reflected surface down like that. Looks a little bit better like that. <laughs> This is a little bit, actually it looks pretty cool. That's a lot of contrast there. But look at that, reflected light, no reflected light, whatever. Uh, it's 9 p.m., 2 a.m. All right, let's take a look at this uh, silver one right here. Very shimmery, a lot more reminiscent of almost pra practically working on a white piece of paper, but that reflective quality in terms of that sheer amount of uh, reflective light coming off of it and creating that glow is fun. Now this might be fun too uh, to do some of these images and to do it in like silver ink or something like that in the background, maybe black ink right here so that the silver ink is a little bit more, it's more reflective but it's lighter in terms of value to create a additional depth. So I'll have to do a little comparison contrast video using um, some metallic inks on these different surfaces as well uh, for completely different looks but Three views of the lake, and uh, quite different in terms of the end result, using the exact same um, media and methodology here, okay? And uh, I don't know, they're all fun to do. Like I said, this wasn't the ideal technique right here in terms of adding that um, additional black ink over the tops of the images, okay? So what I would do is I would mix it up. I would add that in beforehand. And uh, to, so let me see if I can just block off some of this light so you can see some different um, colors like, or different variations here a little bit. Hard to do, hard to photograph these ones, but ultimately super fun to, um, to do in application. I love the process. The process of adding all that stuff in there, I mean, it's okay, like the white, but when you add those images over the top of it, it really brings things out, and just adding those little types of touches like that are really fun to do, and 
watching how these um, develop is, uh, I don't know, it's some of the most fun uh, in terms of tech, but you know, the different techniques that I've done in the past. Um, and then getting kind of an inherently more dynamic, in my opinion, kind of end result quicker. The one thing that I do miss, just, you know, the addition of multiple colors within something like this, you know, I'm not going to create some kind of sunset, I don't think, over the top of like, you know, uh, silver foil or something like that. So that's the only thing that's missing there. So we'll have to try to play around with incorporating some, you know, some, uh, spot colors or something like that in uh, these types of scenes right here. So pretty quick scenes to do. And uh, like I said, three cards like this, when we're at the 50 minute mark, and I'm still kind of playing around with the technique right here. So any one card I think would take like 15 minutes or something like that at most. Uh, if you just did it straight through. Okay? So anyways, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments section. Hope you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks again.